So when growing cannabis, it's very important to keep in mind uh, the photo period that you're exposing your plants to. And photo period is the duration of continuous light or continuous darkness that those plants are being exposed to because that will impact whether it stays in a vegetative state or it goes into a flowering state. So photo period in the general sense is described as the length of day or period of time the plant is exposed to light. Typically plants are only able to tell the length of night, but this is typically just assumed to be the opposite of the day length. Now you hear something called a long day. That is the same as saying a short night. Long days of summer refer to the fact that there are more hours of sun exposure, which means the nights must be short. In contrast, short days are long nights. Short days, which occur during the winter, refer to the fact that there are less hours of sun exposure during the day, which makes the nighttime longer. Typically, it's a longer, cooler area, especially around Yukon and southern New England. Good days, kind of quill up next to a campfire. Uh, those long, cold nights, which are short days. Photo period related to cannabis. Understanding the photo period is critical to cannabis production because during long days, this signals the vegetative growth or leaf production. Short days signals flowering or bud production. So again, long days and short days will affect the morphology of the plant. So exposing cannabis to the um, plant to light, well, depending on what light the cannabis plant is exposed to will depend on the behavior that it exhibits. A small plant will go into flower if given short days. This is particularly important for those that are using artificial light to make sure their timers are set properly. Artificial light and timers are important because when growing cannabis under artificial light, it's important to ensure the timers are functioning in a correct manner. We have a way of checking this. 16 to 24 hours of continuous light exposure will allow the vegetative state to continue to occur. 12 hours or less of continual light exposure will induce flowering in your plants. Now there's some special cases. So keep in mind, uh, cannabis falls into this category. If we have our long days, that's going to cause it to stay vegetative. If we get less than that critical length, if we get those short days and those long nights, that will induce flowering at any stage of production. Now we've got to be careful here in the sense that if we notice it's still a short day, but we have this exposure of light here. We want to make sure that we're not having any light exposure because that will break up the night because plants are only able to tell the hours of continuous darkness. So here, technically, we have the same hours of darkness, we would think, but in this case, we had the lights come on for some reason. This could be a faulty switch. This could be someone turning on the lights uh, unintentionally and it breaks the night. As a result, these two sections of darkness equate to this area, so the plant will remain in a vegetative state. And the opposite will occur with long day plants. So this is important for people in the floral industry forcing things into flower, but for cannabis where you may want them to flower or not flower, it's very important that you maintain or look at that continual hours of darkness. Long hours of continual darkness will induce flowering. Short hours of continual darkness will keep them in the vegetative state. There's also something called auto flowering cannabis and these are cultivars that flower regardless of the photo period and they can be great for entry level people. Um, typically the genetics are a little bit more limiting but they do allow the grower not to worry about the amount of photo period that it's being exposed to. It can help predict particularly new growers, help them predict when to expect flowers and harvest of their crop.